let's get our smarmy leftist I told you so's out of the way early, as if we're ever done with those. So the Michigan primary happened just the other day. You know, there's not really a primary happening with the Democrats. It's pretty much just Biden, Biden, and Biden, 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 Biden. And yet, in spite of that, in the Michigan primary, uh, Biden managed to be challenged by <clears throat> about 100,000 uncommitted votes. basically Democrats voicing their discontent with Biden. Now, he still won Michigan in the primary, like obviously, 81%, but that means a full one out of five people who got up out of bed and decided to vote in the Democrat primary in Tuesday's, uh, yeah, in, in Michigan. One in five voted uncommitted. That's a lot. That's a lot, actually. That's a lot. <laughs> That's not good. It's not good enough that uh, people are uh, people are talking about it. This is bad, right? Well, it's bad for Biden. Yeah, but 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 guys, guys, guys. Oh, sorry. Thirteen percent uh, voted uncommitted. Just nineteen percent didn't vote for Biden. Sorry, my apologies. Thirteen un percent. Thirteen percent uncommitted. Nineteen percent not for Biden. Which means that, like, in the other contenders that aren't Biden, right? That would have been six percent or less than half of the people who voted uncommitted. It's uh, a substantial number of people. Anyway, this is being framed by uh, the media appropriately, which I appreciate. This is ultimately a, um, a, a, a non-committal stance that's being taken as a product of Biden's disastrous handling of the Israeli conflict, uh, genocide. With 95% of the votes counted, Biden won Tuesday's primary with 81%, but 13% or more than 100,000 people cast uncommitted ballots in a state where a large Arab American community with other progressive Democrats vented their anger at Biden's support of an Israeli offensive in which tens of thousands of Palestinians have been killed. Neither Biden nor Kamala Harris mentioned Gaza or Israel in their statements on Michigan's results, an omission that drew criticism from organizers of the uncommitted vote effort. The results showed Biden's, quote, core group of supporters are still behind him, a Biden campaign official said on Wednesday. Uh, I'm sorry, your core supporters are behind you. We're running into a tight federal election. You don't want your core supporters being the ones who are behind you. That's not, that's not what you're looking for. The whole reason the Democrats pushed Biden so hard and then shunted away all the other possibilities for 2024 is on the basis of electability. Bosch Biden won Michigan by like 150K in 2020. Yeah, but there was an actual primary back then, you know, but but yeah, no, 100, 100K uncommitted is, uh, is, is massive. Yeah, 100%. The Biden campaign is overconfident they can win Michigan while losing Muslim and Arab support. I mean, look at what the official said. Quote, this doesn't mean we will ignore the Arab American and Muslim American population. We will not. We are not taking anyone for granted, the official said. That is an ominous fucking statement to make as a campaign official. Are you kidding me? That is really grim. Like, Biden and Kamala Harris getting criticism for not acknowledging why there were so many uncommitted votes, and then a campaign official being like, listen, listen, we're not forgetting about Muslims and Arabs. Okay, come on, come on. We're not taking you for granted. It's just, you know, our core group of supporters are still behind him. Just, you know, and then on the periphery, you have like Arabs and Muslims, you know, like, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, you, yeah, you know, I mean, you're still with us, right? We're not taking you for granted. But, you know, just so you know, even though Muslims and Arabs aren't with us, our core group of supporters are still. Do you understand why it's a bad statement? Does it make sense? You understand? It's a really bad statement to make. It's really grim. Really, really grim. Do these people want to lose? Eh, they're, 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 they're liberals, okay? Um, willful incompetence is their, uh, you know, is the name of the game. The official said the president was working to build lasting peace in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And then, I think the most telling quote of all, he's not approaching this issue as a politician, but as commander-in-chief. My dude, that is the problem. That is the problem. Listen, Arabs, Muslims, okay, I understand your concern about the genocide that we're funding and enabling and providing political cover for, but you need to understand, okay, rather than employing political skills, the thing one might do to prevent the genocide, Biden is actually wearing his general hat. What do you mean by that exactly? What is it? What do you mean by that? Is that do you really think that's going to assuage these uncommitted voters, the knowledge that Biden is super duper militarily committed to what? Fighting Hezbollah, Hamas? 
uh, the Houthis. What does that mean? Insane. Democrats overall support Biden's handling of the Israeli-Hamas conflict by 61%. That is really bad, by the way. Because keep in mind, um, like knowledge of what's going on over there is not evenly distributed across the population and people who are opposed are really opposed nobody who's opposed to biden's handling here is opposed for some kind of light-handed milk toast and eh, i think some improvements could be made kind of way uh for the most part it's full-on like yeah he's enabling a genocide so if you want to think of it another way 40 percent of democrat respondents think that joe biden is like a participant in a genocide Probably not exactly 40%. I don't know. You could say some fraction, half of them, two thirds of them. I don't know. A significant portion of Democrat voters really don't like what Biden is doing. And when we're coming up into, uh, you know, what will already be like a pretty difficult federal election for president, you know, you, know, you kind of need everyone on deck. Just over 101,000 voters cast uncommitted ballots, far more than the 10,000 organizers said they sought and prompted some to speak of plans for a nationwide movement. When Democrat president, Democratic President Barack Obama ran for re-election in 2012, he faced about 21,000 uncommitted votes in Michigan's primary that year. Woo! Now that's what I like to call the most electable president of our lifetime. Now that's what I like. That's what I like to call Joe Biden was the only one who could beat Donald Trump. That's what I like to say about that. Keep in mind as well, we're not talking about any random blue state here. We're talking about Michigan, okay? Do you remember how narrow Biden's victory was in Michigan back in 2020? 50.6% over 47.8%. He won by 150,000 votes. Not exactly a, uh, uh, you know, a California sweep here, okay? This is a swing state. A swing state that is only, uh, you know, very tentatively in the grasp of the Democrats. I'm going to cry, dude. This would have been so different if Bernie won. Well, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. Bernie would probably be too old to run in this election anyway. They're both too old. You know, the, the, the Democrats should have taken Biden as a one-term president and then set somebody else up to be the next presidential, uh, uh, you know, um, front runner in 2024. Easily. Biden could have stepped down graciously and said that it's been the honor of his lifetime and his political career serving the American people for four years, but he wants to enjoy his retirement and he would hand things off to Kamala Harris, who would then pick a VP. I don't like Kamala Harris, but this like objectively would be much better and smarter. It also means that um, uh, they could do a little bit of like accountability shuffling when it comes to uh, the uh, uh, genocide uh, being committed by Israel. No way Kamala could win. They could have they could have pumped her with some more adrenochrome. There's always more adrenochrome. The absolute delusion of the spokesperson who commented about Biden. The the audacity of contrasting Arab American and Muslim Americans with core group of supporters is fucking psychotic. Like genuinely, it's like it's like wanting to lose. It's it's crazy, you know? Like it's it's unbelievable. Can you imagine a Trump official saying this after like a worrying performance in any state? Uh, a, a primary for the GOP, a Trump official saying something along the lines of, well, uh, well, his core supporters are still behind him. We're, we're not forgetting about this. We're, we're not ignoring the suburban population. Like just any, it's, 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 it, all it does is drive wedges. It's, it's bad. It's, it's just really, really, really bad. It's, it's horrible. The votes are enough to send two uncommitted delegates to the Democrats national convention in August. So that's great. We actually, there, there will be uncommitted delegates present at the uh, at the national convention just standing around sort of passively indicating uh disapproval of Biden. You know how bad things in uh in in Israel have to be optically speaking for even like Reuters articles to be concluding uh, uh uh with like Biden's early and strident support of Israel and his refusal to condition military aid on not killing innocent people or destroying infrastructure sparked outrage and a well-organized backlash. Damn, Reuters. Wasn't familiar with your game. Pretty pointed, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty pointed statement there. Do you think they'll organize in more states now that Michigan went so well? I hope so. I want more uncommitted primary votes. If you voted uncommitted in Michigan instead of voting for Biden, you're a Trump-supporting terrorist. True. That's true. That's pretty true. Biden won Michigan by less than a 3% margin in 2020. Now some opinion polls show the likely Republican candidate Donald Trump ahead in a head-to-head -head matchup in the state this time. Michigan has some 200,000 Arab American voters, more than Biden's slim 155,000 uh, voter majority or a margin of victory in 2020. Does the primary even matter for Biden? It certainly matters when it comes to showing people's disapproval. Washington state's largest labor union is uncommitted on uh, Biden. Woo! Oh, 
Biden is so pro-union too. Do you know how how f***ing odious you have to be? The Washington chapter of the United Food and Commercial Workers has over 50,000 members. Yeah. Yeesh. Are we really getting a, a second Trump turn then? What the fuck? I'm not, I don't f read the future. What are you talking about? I'm not magical. Vosh is the uncommitted campaign basically an effort to bluff that you won't vote for him in the general? I mean, it might not be a bluff. I'm pretty sure, you know, th we're, we're not all like, um, VGG, uh, internet utilitarian lords. I'm pretty sure a lot of these people are just not voting for Biden. You know, I studied a lot of politics in my day, got a big brain for politics. I gotta say, who could have known that, uh, supporting a genocide would lose you voters when you're the leader of a nominally progressive political party? That's crazy. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain right now. I'm, 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 I'm pondering an orb and I'm wondering, is it, is it possible that it might be politically unpopular in an election year to loudly and aggressively throw all your support behind a belligerent fascist, like a corrupt, uh, you know, like ethno-nationalist leader in the Middle East as he begins, uh, sort of indiscriminately attacking a largely civilian population. I'm just, you know, I'm thinking, thinking, I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're so banking on the Palestinian genocide being old news by November. Yep. That's, I mean, that's what like, um, that's what, um, fuck, what's his name? One streamer said to me at one time. Yeah. Yeah, IRI, -R -I, yeah. This is totally on the DNC. It's not voters' fault this time, no matter how much liberals blame. Oh, people will 100% blame the voters. And, like, again, in a purely utilitarian sense, like, you should vote for Biden. But holy shit, man. Like, you know, you can't, like, you you can't, like, Biden's going out there, like, uh, uh, for a press conference, and he's, p like, pulling out his greasy cock and balls and putting them on the edge of the podium and smashing them with a hammer. Like, I don't know. Like, you, you, you can't. Like, if Biden died, I would prefer voting for his corpse over Donald Trump. But if he died and the Democrats ran his corpse, that doesn't mean I can't blame the DNC for not having a better alternative. The issue is that IRI is right. Most Americans still support Israel. We're not talking about whether or not most Americans support Israel. We're talking about whether or not a significant enough number of Democrats are disgusted with Biden's actions that they wouldn't vote for him. Also, who, who would previously not have voted for Biden that will now that he's okay with like gutting Palestinian civilians. Like what, what, what political gain is there to be, to be had here? You know, like who, who's benefiting from this, you know, politically, it's insane. Is this a bad time to mention that today the IDF opened fire on starving Palestinians waiting for an aid truck killing a hundred? It's being called the flower massacre. We'll talk about it in a second. You know, the, Biden probably was hoping that Netanyahu, who would wrap this up quickly, that he would just do like two weeks of indiscriminate bombarding and, you know, like quiet things down, wrap it up. But, uh, you know, the, the, if, if he had only watched one of my streams and known what fascists are like, he might have known otherwise. He might have known that, uh, you know, they've been gunning for this ethno-nationalist bullshit for a long time and that the eradication of the Palestinian people has been the clear end goal of, uh, you know, Zionist uh, uh, politicking for a while. Israel released a thermal aerial video of the Palestinians trying to get food, and it literally looks like an ant swarm trying to get food. It's horrific. Well, I mean, that tracks, because they do think that um, the Palestinians are, are vermin, right? So, Why do people keep saying most Americans support Israel? Every poll I've seen is more and more clearly saying they strongly support the ceasefire. Yeah, even 10% of Democrats supporting a ceasefire would be enough to, like, cast real dispersions on Biden's electoral viability. But uh, it's not 10%. 10% is not the number of Democrats or Americans broadly who want that. Voters support the U.S. calling for a permanent ceasefire and de-escalation of violence in Gaza. Of all likely voters, there's plus 33 points in support to oppose. That's of all voters. For Democrats, plus 60 points. 76 support to 16 oppose. That's in the Democrats. That's what Biden has stood against. That's what that's that's what the Biden administration has stood against so aggressively that they prevented the State Department from making statements uh, using the word ceasefire or other related words. Uh, have pledged unconditional support to uh, Israel. Have not like uh, uh, held them to account or threatened to withhold aid or like put any obligations for for good behavior uh, to the point where Netanyahu is just screening Biden's calls and not listening to them. You know. Even 
Republicans are plus eight points. I don't understand why we're pretending Biden hasn't been condemning any of this. Shut the fuck up, you fucking weakling. You limp-wristed piece of shit. He has literally pledged constantly over and over support for Israel and their actions. Like, the extent to which he has signaled support is insane. The, the Biden administration occasionally saying, like, we hope he will take measured responses to this or lightly pressuring them to not do a ground invasion of Rafah is nothing. Like, he is the president of the United States of America. What do you think? Do you think he's like a, the president of like a student group? Do you think he's the president of a university? What do you think he's the president of? A corporation? He can do anything. He has been, he, he has done everything possible to play cover for Netanyahu and what he's done. The list of statements of protections made has been incredibly extensive. The idea, the reason why you're getting these milk toast denunciations now is because he's terrified of what he's enabled, because he's now trapped himself. He's put himself into a corner. He could have been principled from the start, but he wasn't. He immediately leapt out to defend Israel's behavior. And as a consequence of that now, he doesn't want to come across as like hypocritical or turning on both sides of the aisle by like shifting away now that it's clear Netanyahu is a fucking lunatic. But it already was clear. It's been clear for decades that Netanyahu is a lunatic. It should have been clear from the word go. It always was clear. There's no excuse for this. You had members of the State Department protesting outside the uh, White House with masks on a little while ago because they were being prevented from using language or making statements in line with what was actually happening in the Gaza Strip. There are people in his administration who resigned over this. Like, this is, this is, Biden is not just like, oh, da -da, I'm a dawdling old man, I'm doing whatever. Biden has been a, a Zionist for basically his entire political career. He's been more and more aggressive about it lately. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, he, the President of the United States, has made statements with essentially indicating that Jews in America are not safe and they would be safer in Israel. In addition to this being objectively empirically incorrect, even by the statements of Zionists, how f crazy is that to say as the president of America? Like, how? That's f insane. Are you kidding me? As the United States president to say, literally, for him to say, Jews aren't safe here, they need Israel. What? What the fuck? He said it multiple times, too. It wasn't just once. Genuinely psychotic. Didn't he say it again like two days ago? Yes. Even Trump would be like, I love the Jews. You're safe here. We love you all. Yeah, it, remarkably, in that rhetoric specifically, Trump actually objectively superior. Yeah, 100%. Trump isn't a Zionist. He's just a racist. And he falls in line with evangelicals. So a lot of the Zionist shit that he says is more like him just going along with the Republican trend. Biden is ideologically Zionist, meaning that uh, like he will say incredibly weird shit like that. Like the yeah, like Jews aren't safe here. Sh I don't. It's it's so weird. It's so weird. Um, it's so strange. Do you think he would sacrifice the U.S. to protect Israel? What does that even mean? No, that's not that's not the deal with Zionism. There's a it's a very specific kind of brain rot. It's not a dual loyalty issue. Vosh, the point is, Jews have always been temporarily safe somewhere, but without controlling the country, they aren't permanently safe. Rivera, life. You too. If fascists take over the U.S., Jews will not be safe here. Fascists have already taken over Israel. What do you mean? No, 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 it's complete bullshit. What are you talking about? The Zionist project has done nothing but worsen everything. It's, it's worsened Middle East relations. Uh, Israel is a fascist state. It's an ethno-nationalist state. It's worsened, like, broader political relations with Jews around the world because Israel keeps screaming that it's the world's Jewish state and then does horrible shit to Palestinian people. Like, no, not even remotely. Biden's statement is literally like saying Muslims would only be safe because of Saudi Arabia's war crimes. Yeah, no, yeah, li literally. <laughs> or, or, you know, Sunni Muslims would not be safe anywhere. Or, yeah, some bullshit. That's the argument, lol. I'm not saying it's right, but that's the argument. Well, if it's wrong, then I don't care much for the argument. Yeah, but it's but that is, like, definitionally wrong, Rivera Life. So, like, I know why they say it. It's just, it's incorrect. So I don't care. Like, the white people, white nationalists say the exact same thing. White nationalists say that white people aren't safe unless they control their future. Like every every like group of racists says the same thing. It's it's the same logic every time. I want to see that statement on the Seth Meyers show. The only way Israel ultimately survives, and I make no God, bones he looks about old. it. I get criticized for it's it's late night with Seth Meyers. I can't show this. I'll get instant copyright striked. Zionist, where there's no Israel, there's not a Jew in the world to be safe. Every day we see this. That's so cool, dude. That's that's two days ago. President Biden on uh, late night with Seth Meyers. Zionist. Where there's no Israel, there's not a Jew in the world to be safe. 
every day we see this horrible image. That's so cool, man. Thank you. En enjoy your loss in Michigan. The weird thing is he keeps calling himself a Zionist completely unprompted because he's always been one. He's been one for a while. Uh, it, it's, it's not new. It's just, remember this shit? U.S. not drawing red lines for Israel. The U.S. is not trying to dictate limits for Israel. You know, Israel, the state we provide massive amounts of military and political aid to. You know, why would we dictate any limits there? Vosh, this is such an overreaction. Biden has still beaten Trump in every primary by getting the most votes. What? In every primary? What? You don't... Trump and Biden don't run against each other in primaries. This is crazy because we dictate limits for Ukraine but not Israel? Yep! Mm-hmm! We provide aid to Ukraine and we're like, hey, hold on, we don't want to give you jets because you might use it to strike Russia. I know you're being invaded by a gigantic, like, fascist empire, but, you know, let's, let's like, dictate limits and, like, you know, handhold and withhold and pearl clutch and blah blah. Oh, Israel? Oh, Israel wants to, like, indiscriminately target a civilian population that poses no threat to them? Oh, and they also want to, like, launch strikes into Syria and, 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 and fucking, um... Uh, 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 in Lebanon and everything? Hell yeah, bro, go for it. Here, no limits. Have every weapon. Kept, my mouth kept trying to say Libya. I don't understand the strikes in other countries. Why are they doing that? Because we won't stop them from doing it. Because they can do whatever they, we want. The Biden administration has signaled very loud and clear that they're free to do anything that they want. So, like, why wouldn't they? You know? Like, they give a shit. I'd bet anything they don't bother setting limits because they know Israel will just openly say no. If if Israel, if Biden had any stones, he could put a stop to this whenever he wanted. It's happened before. Reagan's put a stop to um to Israel's like uh, expansionist like ethno nat war bullshit. We've had them turn over land before. Like the, he's the president of the United States. He can do anything he wants. He could cut funding. He could, the media in Israel could go dark for 24 hours, and when the media comes back on, Netanyahu has had a tragic fall down a set of stairs, and a new, uh, a, a new PM who nobody has ever seen before uh, is, 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 is advising, like, temperance and caution in a new era of Israel's future, and how to mourn Netanyahu, like, we must take a pause on the uh, uh, aggression in the Gaza Strip. Like, he can do anything. Okay, but what can Biden legally do? What do you mean, what do you mean legally? Legally? Law? What are you, what do you... We're the United States. What part of we're the United States? What is he? The sanctions threaten to withhold aid, impose like a, a like massive military pressure in the region. There's lots of stuff you can do legally, you know, if you're willing to like put it into paper. Uh, there's plenty that he could do. Stop like blocking UN condemnations, you know, pressure uh, Western allies in, in 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 Western Europe to stop supporting Israel as well, like. Yeah, the United States is the one doing illegal shit right now because we're giving cover to the unlawful behavior of Israel. Like we're currently breaking the law. If if we if we if law is something that we purport to care about, then anything but what we're currently doing would be a more lawful approach. It would be illegal to not do this. Actually, okay. So what could he do that wouldn't be disastrous politically? I really hate questions like this, Sigabiz, because not only have I answered them, but the language you're employing really does imply you think that the only thing he could have done was full-throatedly defend and protect Israel as they do a genocide. Like, are you kidding me? Really? You really can't think of anything else when the current thing he's doing is this unpopular, when there is like a 70-point difference in Democrats uh, supporting a ceasefire versus not, while his administration won't even mention ceasefire. Like, you really think, like, I, I, again, it's like he's smashing his cock and balls with a, with a rock on the podium, and people are like, well, if he didn't smash his cock and balls with the rock, people would still give him shit. Before he pulled his cock and balls out and smashed it with the rock, people were still attacking him in the media. Now they're attacking him, sure, but they would have attacked him anyway, so what difference would, like, I, it's insane to me. I don't understand. Um, but you know, whatever. I mean, I guess I'll enjoy like what while I'm being led off to the camps after Trump wins I guess I'll enjoy being smarmy about it because I can t go to all the liberals next to me in line and go like eh -heh. You know share a train car and like yeah, -heh -heh. you know, did you know Biden did bad except you know There wouldn't even be a point in that because based on the polling We just looked at like four and five liberals would agree with me just fully like sell like like completely unforced error on the Democrats part I also agree with you, but it's dumb to focus on that instead of the greater threat. The greater threat is the Democrats, bro. They're shooting themselves in the foot. If you care so much about Trump, you should be mad at the Democrats for doing a massively politically unpopular shit, like leaving aside the morality of the whole genocide thing, which is, I'm told, a bad thing to support. I've heard, you know, I've heard rumors of this, but like, 
you know, leaving that aside, they're the ones doing this. You know, if voters don't want to vote for Biden because he and his party are like fully lined behind a genocide, that's on the party, dog. I'm really sorry. Like you can't you can't just approach politics, the like the broader subject of politics with the expectation of like, hey, no matter how monstrous and politically ineffective and repellent like your guy is, it's actually everyone else's fault for not voting for them, even if they could have just not been monstrous and repellent. They, you know, at some point you have to like acknowledge that there is a responsibility to play the game effectively. So you're no longer vote blue no matter who? What? No, I've already said you should still vote for Biden. That doesn't mean it's not Biden's fault if people don't vote for him.